I usually don't do this. I usually don't read something. Um, but since I didn't really so much wanted to present our work uh, at Fuse Project, um, I wanted to sort of speak of some ideas um, about atoms and bits and about how what designers do is, I believe, giving atoms and bits. So the fundamental element for me that gets me up in the morning and I think gets most of us up in the morning is that design is generous. Advertising is not generous. Every designer, every maker starts with the idea of giving the world something new, something useful, something beautiful. Making and designing has been extended from, has been extended from atoms, the, the products and the things that we use, to bits, the software, the applications, um, and the experiences. And today, being a maker, simply, means doing both, often concurrently. So the atoms need to be more relevant in our 21st century. They need to be durable, they need to be sustainable, they need to be affordable and customizable. The bits need to deliver experiences that are beautiful, functional, and most importantly, that anticipate our individual needs. Both atoms and bits are the building blocks really at the core of the new businesses and the new brands that are being created right now. They're not the afterthoughts they once used to be. For advertisers, they are, but not for not if you're serious about building a business and building a company. They are the whole story. And yes, design makes money. Steve Jobs and Apple have decidedly given designers credibility in business. But that's not where every great designer or maker I know starts. Um, they begin at that very intersection of two seemingly, seemingly opposite instincts. Making something people want and searching for something that has not been done before. Designers want to please and disrupt the status quo. And doing both at the same time is what I think makes us, makes designers become successful contrarians. And so almost by default, what design does is accelerate the adoption of new ideas. This new century is really about disrupting all industries Designers, coders, entrepreneurs are challenging notions that sustainability, for example, is expensive, or that technology is hard to use, or that quality is exclusive. There's no segment of the economy that isn't being disrupted by these ideas right now. So mass production, for example, will soon be replaced by mass customization, thanks to low-cost 3D printers, cloud-based collaborations, etc. Overseas manufacturing um, is being challenged by cars, electronics, soft goods made locally in high-tech flexible production facilities. We're seeing that happening everywhere. Products are starting to adapt, learn, and evolve by, cogniz by being co cognizant of our behavior through cloud connections, providing small and large companies with the data to make further improvements, such as Nest, for example. And then finally, sustainability will be a de facto expectation from us, the consumers, um, but also if you want to build a successful business, as plant-based polymers and efficient manufacturing is being developed everywhere. So what this me leads me to is this idea that design wants to be free. To paraphrase through a brand, and this is a bit of a, of a paraphrase, but when I say free, I'm talking about it in the broadest sense of the word, both low cost and liberated. We're not there yet, but we're not far off either. What will liberate design? I think it's our tools, for one. You know, they're increasingly cheap, powerful, and available to all. And design no longer signifies high priests at the drafting table, but rather you and me at our, compu at our computers with 3D printers, for example, that are becoming the new inkjet. Or, um, you know, and, and, and the, age of, the age of desktop publishing is also fast becoming the age of desktop manufacturing. Tools are liberating design, but so are people. 
right? We have become participants in social platforms that allow us to collaborate and customize and create. And in this process, we've become expert collaborators. We've become very good at customizing things. We've become pretty good creators. Whether that means sharing the stress photos on um, you know, Instagram or Pinterest, or uploading 3D, design for, 3D, 3D designs for a new product on Thingiverse, which is the MakerBot community site. So the upshot is design is just, isn't just something we, we appreciate. It isn't just something that people want to talk about because it's you know, sort of an after work activity or, or sort of a hobby for them. It's something we do and we're all going to do it. I think the result is that people will feel better about their consumption. They'll feel more connected to the things they own. And this generosity I was talking about before, um, that they experience in the products and the interfaces that are made for them, will be returned to us and to the entrepreneurs with more crowdfunded new companies, for example, through sites like Kickstarter. This is something that completely took us by surprise um, that we just completed a, about a month ago. So, you know, this, this generous instinct that I'm talking about will, will be returned to us in great multiples. And advertising and marketing, too, will take its cues from design and by emulation will be culturally more centered and culturally more generous. It's a cycle, it's a good cycle, not a bad cycle. We keep hearing about the bad cycles out there, but I believe it's a good cycle. Good design attracts better design. And I think we will all be better for it. So what I believe is that we need to see ourselves, the designers, as the liberators who are setting design free. And building new businesses and economies at the same time. I know these two ideas are a paradox, but I think we can live with that paradox. Thank you very much.